The University of Detroit Mercy presents another brand new episode of Ask the Professor, the radio show on which you match wits with the University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. Today's program was recorded using Zoom video conferencing technology. The University Tower Chimes bring in another session of Ask the Professor, the show on which you match wits with the University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. I'm your host, Matt Mayo, and let me introduce to you our panel for today. All the way at the bottom of my screen, it's not a commentary on who he is. It's Professor Jim Tubbs. Oh, hello. I didn't realize I was at the bottom of your screen. I'm at the I top of because, mine, actually. <laughs> I think it was because of the, the log in, log out uh, kind of uh, yeah, scenario. That right was probably it. Probably better late than never. And, and this, is a, this is a red letter day. There's no question because Jim is not in the easy chair. He's with his uh, glorious hutch behind. Him. In front of the China cupboard, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but where's the crown? That nobody uses. <laughs> <laughs> How have things been going, Jim? Well, so far, so good. Yesterday, I had to do a, a presentation for the pediatric uh, ICE residents at Children's, and it was an hour and a half long. Wow. So it Ooh. took a long time to prepare for and now it's done. So it's time to like start buying Christmas gifts and that, that, that kind of thing. Perfect. Perfect. Thanksgiving. Are we allowed to ask you like um, the, the, the matter of the content of the presentation? Three topics. Whoa, mama. <laughs> Four principles of medical ethics, the principles involved in decisions of, of fetal care and uh, principles involved in consent and assent. In wow. This is some heavy stuff, Jim. Well, yeah. <laughs> heavy, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> I know. I was about to say, somebody has to do this, people. And if there's no better person than Jim Tubbs to walk Well, us no, through. I mean, I admire the pediatricians that are dealing with this stuff all the time. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I admire you for getting anywhere near a bunch of people that have probably been so exposed to COVID that they're radioactive. At this no, point. no. We did it on Zoom. Oh, wonderful. Perfect. Everybody's happy. I just saw the uh, Detroit Free Press numbers for the last 48 hours, and I, that's all I'm going to say about it. It's, uh, it's the number of children that have it and have died from it in this state is what is appalling to me. Yeah. Yesterday, it was uh, in yesterday's paper, it was like 28 children have died of AIDS in Michigan. Yeah. I mean, not of AIDS, of uh, COVID. COVID. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, uh, Professor Dan Maggio is here with us today. Hi, Matt. <laughs> I was trying to think of something more positive to say. And I know. Can any, you help I, me uh, do a spin here? I was actually trying. I was actually thinking, uh, what algorithm does Zoom use to determine the placement of people on the screen? Oh, wonder too. Oh, oh. speaking of placement, Dan, I was going to tell you, I don't know whether you knew about this or not, but one of the group, actually two of the groups that Sue Andrews uh, curls yeah. with, they were. <laughs> They were doing a turkey, um, <laughs> turkey slide where they placed a turkey yes, at the front I've of seen. the house, and then whoever stone knocked it the closest to the to the center uh, won the turkey. They won the turkey. <laughs> Matter of fact, I saw turkey. Sue last night. I stood next to her and I said to Sue, "I don't remember if we've ever curled on the same night before. She's always been on different leagues, but last night I stood next to her and talked to her. She's now curling three, sometimes four days yeah, a week. Look at her. Yeah. Oh cool. my gosh. Oh, Sue. Man. Some uh, Olympic training in there. Yeah. Yeah. As Dan has taught us many times, there is a huge uptick in interest in curling uh, leading up to a Winter Olympics. So we would expect to see that very soon. Yeah. We are planning. We have big days ready for uh, awesome. lots of people. That's awesome. Come in. Um, going, continuing, I should say, around the horn, Professor Mara Livesey is here with us today. What's going on, Mara? Oh, you know, just trying to make it to the weekend. <laughs> well, you're here. You're getting close. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so close. It's Miller it's time like, somewhere. It's like horseshoes and hand yeah. grenades. <laughs> oh, I was talking with Jane today. She came by my office after we were done with a chemistry club meeting. And I was like, Jane, I think I need to go home and have a two o'clock glass of wine. <laughs> I didn't. That's always a good I idea. Coffee. Always a good idea. No, no, no. You just use the mug. You need a larger. 
<laughs> sort of uh, sort of out of the blue today. Uh, uh oh. What do you mean? Uh oh. Lost. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. You uh -oh. went silent. Oh my God! He's going shields and Yarnell on us. We're oh my God. <laughs> Everything's going to be fine. Okay, all right. There we go. <laughs> all right. Sure that Michael can edit that out. But um, <laughs> um, earlier today, completely out of any other context than the pandemic, Jane walked into the chair's office, stared directly at me and said, can you imagine what it would be like right now if you and I were heavy drinkers? <laughs> and then just left the office. I was just like, that needs it's, to be reminded every once in a while. Hey, Matt, how are your assessment forms coming? Oh, please, are you kidding me, Jim? When I saw that, when I saw that announcement come out, I thought, "Thank God, I'm retired." Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, the, Thanks the for twisting the, the dagger. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a bad time, Mara, to say that we've, you know, we've got the three biochem specific? Uh, degree outcomes and we have to assess at least three maybe we'll just do those this year i'm not gonna do cool. that we're not gonna do that but... and don't That's you have to have I exhibits mean. now or something like that uh yes and no i gotta be honest karen lee has got it set up to be pretty well streamlined i mean it's literally a google form you're filling out and most of it is cut and paste sort of stuff so it's not the end of the world but we just also went through jim we, we literally have this golden key uh, our department um, just went through a little bit of a um, degree curriculum reboot, and we've got all sorts of changes we've recently made that we can sort of blame on assessment or, or give credit to assessment. <laughs> oh. It won't all be biochem, Mara, I promise. We're, we're going to mix it up. We have to mix it up. Hey, I'll do what I can. <laughs> Uh, last but most certainly not least is Professor Dave Chow. Uh, in my uh, screen, he's always pretty much in the same place. It's a pretty big deal when he's not there. Oh, okay. Uh, pleasure to be here, as always. And I'm also thankful not to be teaching anymore, too, because, like, man, <laughs> you that are. just sounds like paperwork galore. I mean, good uh -huh. lord. Yep. I mean, <laughs> I just remember the, the last syllabi I had to fill out. I mean, yeah, I know it's cut and paste, but I was like, yeah, you know, it's like you wear out the two keys on you know, on your keyboard. You hit and cut and paste all day long. It's just like, it's just a time killer. That's all. I completely understand. That's all. And I mind you, I always had a case of wine at my desk too. So I mean, I was I was properly prepared. So <laughs> a full case, huh? Several. Hey, that's what it's for. Well, no, actually, well, I, I think I told you folks. You know, we had that uh, we had a sponsored project with a wine label. You know, from Napa. So that's right. that's they right. gave us samples and. We paid sampled. you in wine? <laughs> yes, they did. Fun project. I they still have. I sold a few bottles. Sampled. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you ready for this? They actually took us to coach at the top oh of the Ren Lord. Every student had about ninety dollars worth of wine for an afternoon. <laughs> wow. Uh, listeners, Coach is is the most exclusive restaurant in Metro Detroit. It was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It it's was yeah. when it existed. <laughs> But the it was the Renaissance Center. That's right. Oh, squeezing right. 18 students into that little elevator, too. It was like we were going to hit the ground floor, but fast. So it was fun. Well, folks, I'll tell you what. This is a program. You can send us questions regarding anything. If you stump the panel, you win one of our prizes. And if you don't stump the panel, you win one of our prizes. You can send us the questions in a number of ways, emailing us at atp at udmercy.edu. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram or listen on your favorite smart speaker by asking it to play Ask the Professor at University of Detroit Mercy. Uh, we haven't really, you know, uh, uh, dove into this fact yet, but this is our Christmas show. So we're thankful for our listeners sending in Christmas questions. So we will take on some holiday questions. And even though this is being um, recorded before the Thanksgiving holiday, folks will have a chance to chime in and be in that festive mood soon enough. My wife and I watched an episode of Jeopardy the other night and counted seven commercials in a row that were all holiday themed, you know, in the teens of November. Uh -huh. It's just the way it is these days. It's just the way it is. Well, speaking of holiday themed, I went to Costco today. And <laughs> oh, it's uh, yeah, there's you can buy every kind of real or fake <laughs> Christmas, any kind of decoration and paper and toys and yeah, pretty much. Everything. That's awesome. 
Yeah. So here's you know, the, the weird thing about it, though, is like right about now, it's like, yeah, you guys are going to the store, get all this holiday stuff. I'm doing summer summer ads right about now. It's just oh, not yeah. right. Just not that right. About right. Oh. Got to think about things six months ahead of time. Like the oh, garment yeah. industry. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here we go, folks. Dear profs, seeing as though I thoroughly enjoyed your show's fine wit the last few years. It's about time I submit a few questions in the mix of stump in, in the mix of hopes of stumping the panel. I saw there was a call for holiday questions and figured it was a perfect opportunity. Attached are 12 for your fine show, and I hope they get used. Three, two, one now. Sincerely, our friend Judy Palmer. Thanks for sending these in, Judy. Thanks, Judy. Let's see what we can do with some holiday themed questions. What Christmas treat popular in England? has dried fruit and spices, and once contained meat as well. Mince pie. Mince meat, yeah. mince meat pie. Mince meat pie. Oh, Mostly, okay. I think of mince meat was, you know, I grew up on some of them Bugs Bunny cartoons. He said he was going to make mince meat out of somebody, and I'm sure I asked someone older than me what that meant before. Uh, or or well, it was a succotash, too. So yes. well, Regular so, mince is just like chopped up beef, you know, like ground beef. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that makes fried, sense. but mm-hmm. mince meat pie includes a lot of other, you know, things too, fruits and stuff. You certainly can't miss if you're wandering anywhere close to Food Network or Cooking Channel, all of the Christmas themed things that basically start the day after uh, Halloween in in our culture. And one of the things that always kills me about those tiny pies that the Brits like is they have to eat them room temperature. It's just something about that that's just. It's just not right. That's all. I'm gonna well, say. the hard sauce they often put on them is is great. You know mm-hmm. that <laughs> that's nice. If you watch the Great British Baking Show, you will see lots of those pies being made, <clears throat> and I hope that they taste better than they look. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they do, Dan. They don't really look appetizing, <laughs> and I hate to say that, but geez, they no, they look terrible. <laughs> that's okay. Is that so? Hopefully, we don't have any British. Our listeners, not anymore. They kind I mean, of look like chopped prunes mixed with some dark yeah. meal. <laughs> yeah. oh my. Just dim the lights. That's all. Just dim the lights for ambiance. <laughs> and put some holly on top and then light it on fire. <laughs> for those profs that actually left stuff out for Santa's reindeer, uh, what did you leave for Santa's reindeer? On Carrots. Eve night? Here, apples. Carrots. Oh, wait a minute. That's deer baiting. Oops, my bad. No, Can't I be doing carrots that. every year. Carrots. And that... cookies for Santa. Mm-hmm. And milk. Yep. So just to be clear, a cookies for Santa and carrots for the reindeer is um, some sort of family feud-esque combination that the majority would respond. The runner-up, though, for what folks would leave for the reindeer is kind of out of the ordinary. I'm just going to let you all know, we would leave a leaf of lettuce. I, I, we never got to the carrot stage. But the lettuce is not in the second spot for what they weren't hamsters huh yeah i was gonna say (laughs) what about straw grass i mean i'm giving Uh, it to you just because you've mentioned almost directly a grain it's it's oats apparently raw Mm, oats for the reindeer oh okay Okay. all right yeah horses eat oats yeah and mares eat oats i was gonna say hey how many turkeys are cooked in the united states every year for Christmas. Ooh. 100 million. Um, that's a little high. 15 million. million. Um, I mean, somewhere in between, as we've done before, I think Dan said 15. I'm going to yep. assume you said 15. It's actually 22. So that's okay. pretty good. Right. That's a lot. I was though. going, I was going with 10%, about 30 million. And then I have that because I thought that was too much. So yeah. 22 is right in the middle. Not too, uh, not too shabby at all. Hey, how do you say Merry Christmas uh, in Spanish? Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Okay. Feliz Navidad. Yes. Where's Jose Feliciano when you need him? You know that um, the way that the federal system of, uh, what is it called? The Uniform Federal Holiday Act was set up. Each state had to buy into each one of the federal holidays without going into too much politics here. You remember in the 1990s, there was an issue because Arizona refused to recognize Martin Luther King Day, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So that means there was a last state to adopt Christmas as an official holiday. What state was that? 
think it was. I think we had this question. Yeah. So, Dan, your memory serves you well. Alabama was the first state to make Christmas an official holiday. Oh, the last. Whoa, Alabama progressive? Yeah. I think that's why, too. Mississippi? Montana? It's not one of the freak states, obviously. Utah. Not Uh, one of the freak states. It's not Utah. No, it's not any of the ones you've said so far. Brooklyn. <laughs> a state, a state. I, can give it away. Um, I think I can give it away by saying one word uh, because it's one of those words that's associated with the state that nobody really knows exactly where it came from. Um, how about if I said sooner? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Oklahoma was the last oh. state. I wonder why. Did they give a reason? No, it doesn't really say. But I mean, it's weird the way that law reads. You have to buy in because. Uh, in the end, it's not true of every state, but I just found out yesterday it's true of um, Michigan that the largest single employer in the state is the federal government. And so you need to make sure you have your holidays lined oh, up correctly. Yeah. Okay. But can you imagine being the legislator that, yeah, I think I'm going to vote no against Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> like, how do, you, how, do you, how do you defend that amongst your constituents? Oh, well, when God. I was in graduate school, the University of Virginia had classes on Labor Day. Oh my gosh! The state Labor didn't officially Day. recognize Labor Day. That is that is overt. Wow. Is overt. Meanwhile, on the easier side of the difficulty scale, uh, how many days traditionally do we have between Christmas Day and the Epiphany? Twelve. Twelve. Well, the twelve yeah. days of Christmas. Yes. I really wish that that was more of an American thing. In my neighborhood, without any exaggeration. 8 a.m. the morning of um, December 26th, there are naked Christmas trees out. I by the know. Curb. Oh yeah. I'm like, and it's Boxing Day. They all can at least recognize party a that. little longer. Thanks. I mean, come on. At least until New Year's. Come on. At I least. really think yeah. It, it's a shame that Christmas, the whole celebration, is this feverish buildup, and then pff, it's over. Yeah. I think celebrating the 12 days of Christmas makes a lot of sense. I, I like Mara's idea. At least wait till New Year's. I mean, come on. You, you yeah. got, what, five, six days of just lounging and loafing. Why not enjoy it? I mean, Kwanzaa gets eight. I mean, seven. True. And Hanukkah True. gets eight. I would think Christmas, you know, 12 days of Christmas would just be very appropriate. Being such a Halloween nerd um, and knowing that pretty much every day of October is sort of like an advent for Halloween. I mean, this is the reason why we see, you know, Christmas uh, take over on November 1st, because, you know, no one can touch Christmas. Everybody, I mean, we have to have a two month buildup, you know. Oh, my. OK, professors, which of Santa's reindeer is named after another animal? Vixen. Uh, Vixen, yeah. Vixen yeah. is a female fox. Yes. Yeah, Vixen. you had to rumble through the red. I'm like, okay, there's yeah, a me too. Yeah, I had to rumble through the, the song. Well, Donna come on. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't any worse than like Mara trying to do the square square root of two last week, running out of fingers and toes. I mean, I got to four. <laughs> yeah, true. Square, square root of two is no joke, <laughs> as I'm sure Dan could tell us. Uh, According to Italian tradition, it's not Santa or any Santa based character who delivers gifts to good children and actually does so on the eve of the epiphany. Do you know who it is? The Amazon prime driver. Mm-hmm. According to which tradition? The wise it's, man? It's a witch. Yeah, it's a witch. A witch. Oh. Her oh. name is La Befana and she really only brings it to good children. Yep. Witches are the best. Witches are cool. With or without a broom? Uh, actually, she does ride a broom. Oh, okay. Well, when I was a kid, we used to always talk about Bell Snickle, who lived at the South Pole, and would come and take him away from the children. Whoa. I remember hearing that legend. <laughs> Man, that's a brutal one. <laughs> it's a legend, right? Uh, we hope. Where uh, this question is phrased a little odd, so I'm looking in Mara's direction because there's a definite a ballet <laughs> bent. Oh. It says, "Where did the Nutcracker start? Do they mean the?" The story, like where does it start to take place in the story? I guess so. It's at the house. Yeah. Of the family. It's a, a wealthy home. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But what Christmas city Eve. is it supposed to take place in? St. Petersburg. Oh. Yeah. St. Petersburg is what yeah. it says here. Yeah. Oh, okay. St. Petersburg, Russia, 1892, the Nutcracker. 
everybody is familiar. Well, I don't actually just immediately start arguing with the questions. Sorry, Judy. Um, most people know what mistletoe is. <laughs> yes. Poison. Yeah, exactly. What's the color <laughs> yeah, of white. mistletoe berry? Oh, uh, white. White. Yeah, yeah, white. White. Yeah. It's white. It's uh, you know why I know that? Very sort of evolutionarily like, yeah, don't eat that. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, come on. And it grows I on live oak trees down south. Oh. And people would go in with a shotgun and shoot it, you know, so it would fall down. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. That's aggressive. No, <laughs> that you're, you're saying? That's where people would oh. get their mistletoe when I was growing up. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was in just saying 19- the only reason I know it's white is because of Harry Potter. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. I was going to say, or, or, or did uh, one of your cats get to it? That's all. I'm like, ooh. No. It's a very... Uh, white because we were lectured not to eat it. Yeah, um, very mystical Celtic thing. Mistletoe is kind of a big deal mm-hmm. to them. Last question from Judy here. Um, in 1953, this Christmas song became the biggest selling single of Eartha Kitt's career. Oh, Santa Baby. Santa Baby. Then to oh. be- Still the most lascivious version of the song. I uh, think. 100%. Yeah. That is a brutal. Uh, that's a PG 13 rating. I mean, uh, like, at least. Was- you know what, but though? It's great. Uh, Earth great piece wonderful. of uh, chemistry, though, because I tell my students all the time, like, it's a good piece of trivia about the periodic table that gold is not the rarest element by a long shot. It's also not the most expensive element. But she actually mentions, a, you know, the deed, get me a deed to a platinum mine. Yes. I'm like, that's getting closer with platinum. It's getting closer. Thanks for sending in those questions, Judy. Let's move on to another set of questions. Ordinarily, I like sending in questions with a wide breadth of topics, but heard the show needed holiday help. I'd like to think the following 10 questions will provide a really good challenge for the professors too. Thanks for the weekly entertainment and education. Ooh. Happy holidays. Sincerely, our friend Rachel Ralston of Norwalk, Iowa. Thanks for sending those in, Rachel. If we're providing an education, is that free? Yes. Or can we charge? <laughs> People send uh, no. in the education here. Yeah, this, 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 it's a trade school now, isn't it? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we're, we're giving out certificates. So Robbie Lester provided a voice or a very famous Christmas character in the Rankin and Bass stop motion animated Santa Claus is coming to town. What character did Robbie Lester voice? Robbie. Was he the, uh, was he the little elf that wanted to be a dentist? Was that the one? Or me? No. Nope. No, no, this was Santa Claus is coming to town. You're thinking of Rudolph the red nose. Oh, okay. 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 I think uh, it's important to mention that Robbie Lester is a woman. Oh, um, Mrs. Claus, uh, Jessica, Mrs. right? Claus, yes, Jessica. Claus. Yep, that was the. Uh, I mean, <laughs> after a while, you know, being in our generation, I'm like, wow, there are a lot of very, very different background stories to how Santa got to be where he is today. And if you're a kid and you're looking for some like MCU level canon, no, nope. it's official, you, nope. you don't get it for Santa. There's so many things all over the place. What was the name of the 1971 Christmas song that Cheech and Chong wrote? Huh. Oh, um, something. Oh, what is it? Um, I can hear it. You can I hear just, it. I love it, but you don't know what it's, it's called. Uh, it's a cannabis Christmas. I mean, yeah, I got to yeah, give some... you partial credit. You know, like, no, uh, no, it's uh, it was a pure guess. It, it wasn't like Grandma got run, run over by a ri- no. Uh, no, it was. Uh... It's funny that Dave is getting that vibe. You know what it was? A uh, Santa Claus and his old lady is what it was called. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> very simple. Oh my Such God. a heartwarming thing. <laughs> oh, Professors, in the classic 1947 Miracle on 34th Street movie, who did Chris Kringle list as his quote, next of kin, unquote? What is elves? Mm-mm. Rudolph? Uh, partial credit? The reindeer? The yeah, reindeer? he listed yeah, all yeah, eight yeah. of the reindeer oh. as his oh. next of kin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Ooh, I wonder who gets to be the executor of that estate. Oh. <laughs> hey, and what t- Christmas TV show does the main character scale to the summit of Mount Crumpet? The Grinch. Oh, the Grinch stole Christmas. Grinch. 
Yes, oh, that's okay. where he was going. Mount and Grumpy. Peter's on the top with the sled at the sled at the end. Presence. Yeah, that, that poor little dog, you know. Oh, oh yeah, that long-suffering oh, dog. Max. I mean, this is classic utility, uh, you know, Dr. Seuss style. The whole line is that he went to the top of Mount Crumpet to dump it. So the only reason <laughs> that mountain has its name is to rhyme <laughs> with that line. To rhyme with it. dump it. What? Yeah. It couldn't have been Mount Trumpet or something else? I mean... Well, we don't like to say that word in my house. No, okay. Oh, oops. The, the T word. <laughs> hey, where in the animated um, uh, in the animated special of the same name, where does Frosty the Snowman meet his demise before being reanimated by Santa Claus? It's the front yard, isn't it? I mean, yeah, he melted. He melted. Yard, yard, right? It was on a street. Was it on Main Street, though? Nope, it wasn't What's in a yard and it wasn't in a street. He was in the chem lab autoclave. <laughs> oh, no. I'll do it. <laughs> Mara, He's sterile. That'll do it. <laughs> he was in a tanning parlor. <laughs> I mean, to be quite frank, uh, you all aren't, I mean, it maybe have been a while he... since we've sat down and watched yeah. that, but you're not actually yeah. that far off. <laughs> was it a skating rink? No. no. In a field? Mm-hmm. Um... At a bus stop. You know what? Uh, we have the oh. voice of God chiming in in the Zoom chat, uh, getting it oh. exactly correct. So he, oh, he was with oh, a, a little girl, right. uh, his friend, right? He What was her name? Karen. Oh, my. Oh, no, it's hot even in more here. Stereotypes. <laughs> and he took her inside a greenhouse oh, so that the she could stay warm. Yeah, the greenhouse. Mm. Yeah. Well, okay, ex- explain this to me. Why could she go in the greenhouse and he wait outside the door? You know I mean? Well, I don't know. He was not aware of what was going to happen in the greenhouse. Okay. Right, right. And already a little bit freaky since the night was so cold that it could have chilled a little girl to frostbite. And it's like, what's in this greenhouse? Oh, of course, poinsettias. I mean, it only makes sense, you know. <laughs> or mistletoe. What animated TV series had an episode titled Red Slay Down for Christmas? Red animated down. TV series? Star Trek? <laughs> I'm sleep. I like because you said r- red. Uh, that, that, that almost sounds like a, a cop show or something like that. I mean, it's animated. The animated, animated is what's weird here. Animated. It's I'm thinking like, I, I was thinking like TJ Hooker or somebody like that. I mean, like, uh, <laughs> no, you know what, folks? Sponge this is an episode. The Jetsons? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. Uh, you have to think about a little bit of uh, post '90s context here. This that was an episode of okay. South Park. Um, oh, Santa no. oh okay. shot down All right. over Iraq. Beth would have. Oh. Beth would have gotten that. Oh, yeah, like, Beth would have gotten that. Oh. And there is major, major bonus points for the professors if you can name any of the backup reindeer that were engaged to extract oh. Santa. Oh. And his original team from Iraq, their names were, this is taking me back. The 2000s were a weird time. Um, <laughs> Santa's backup team were Stephen, Fluffy, Horace, Chantel, Skippy, Rainbow, Patches, and Montel. Hmm. Montel? Okay. <laughs> okay. If only Beth were here. <laughs> yeah, she's going to be very disappointed. Oh, poor Beth. What year was the first... Radio City Rockettes show that was Christmas themed. 1934? Oh my gosh, Jim. 1933, but I'm just giving 33. Whoa. He was in the front row. That's all. He was in the front row. Well, it was not long and not long after the building was finished. That's right. They they did. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that's so hilarious. Uh, Just right off the top of his head. Plus, you're starting to see a lot more of those dates. I mean, here we are. We're only a few years away from the building that I'm coming to you live from uh, being 100 years old. But those dates are starting to freak me out in my generation here. Just a couple more profs. Who provided the singing voice for the main character, Jack Skellington, in The Nightmare Before Christmas? Well, I mean, was it... um... Danny Elfman wrote the music, so did he sing it? Yeah, it was Danny Elfman. It was okay. quite controversial at the time that they had a, a separate voice actor uh, because he was very talented doing the regular voice, and then Danny Elfman did all the singing for that character. Yeah. In what Christmas movie, 
would you find the character Holly Gennaro? Holly Gennaro. Oh, uh, 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 Bruce Willis. Uh, oh, Die Hard? Oh, Die Hard? Die Hard, die hard yes. Oh, that was the Buddy you know, Bedelia, wasn't it? And this is another, Beth, Beth is going to be really oh. disappointed because that is her and Drew's like every Christmas Eve, that's their go-to movie. and Their favorite Christmas movie, which yeah. I find a little disturbing. <laughs> it, but it's Beth. What do you expect? I mean, you know, um, we're going to start seeing the memes soon, too, because they got the 3D printing plans circulated all across the Internet last year where you could do a small 3D print of the Nakatomi building and make it your Christmas tree topper oh. while the top floor is getting blown out. And I'm like, I got to say, that is, that's kind of slick. That's sick. That's just <laughs> sick. Actually, the, the one that I was looking for was the uh, John McClane in the, uh, in the uh, ventilation duct one. Oh, right. Exactly. That, that's been out for a while, so... <laughs> Hey, folks, one more, and I know it's one of your favorite movies of all time because, quite frankly, it stars for a brief four-second stint, the 45th president of the United States. In Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, what hotel does the main character Kevin stay in? The Plaza. It's the Plaza, yes. And for a brief moment... The Trumps managed the Plaza at one point, yes. Yep, that's right. Very, Very well brief, done, professors. I mean, that was hardcore, and I'm giving you essentially full <laughs> passing marks for both of these sets of questions. You did very, very well, but I'm afraid, just taking a look at our clock here, that the time has come to say adios to the Christmas season. Dave. No. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, see ya. <laughs> Mara. Merry Christmas. Dan. Merry Christmas. Jim. Not adios. Merry Christmas until next Christmas, too. <laughs> and now these words from University of Detroit Mercy. Ask the Professor is transcribed in, you know, all of our homes, but usually it's in the Briggs Building in the Department of Communication Studies in the College of Liberal Arts and Education at University of Detroit Mercy's McNichols campus. As the Professor is produced and technically directed by Michael Jason and Brian Masonville, and our executive producer is Professor Jason Roach. Until next week, I'm your host, Matt Mayo. <laughs>